Hello, welcome, or welcome back. You would not believe the troubles I've had in trying to film this video. This is now the fourth time in the past three hours I'm trying to film this video. I'm hoping, praying, I'm on my knees mentally, I'm on my knees begging the Lord to let me finish this video in peace. Um, so, hi, uh, my name is Ash, welcome or welcome back. Today I have for you a low buy update and then just some like stuff that I wanna talk about at the end of this first quarter of the year, um, like my inventory and what have you, just some stuff that I wanna go over. Okay, okay. Let's just get to it. So, um, very firstly, I'll get the less exciting things out of the way. Not that anything is super exciting in this video, but I'm gonna get the, the really boring stuff out of the way. Um, so as far as my palette no-buy goes, doing great. I've been a little tempted by some older palettes, namely the Kaleidos Flower Punk palette and the Urban Decay Stoned Vibes palette but we're not gonna buy them. I'm still on a palette no buy. Even if I wasn't, I don't know for sure that I would wanna buy these. Um, and I plan on, well, I've already duped the Kaleidos Flower Punk palette. I'm gonna be doing um, a couple videos coming up in April uh, using my Flower Punk dupe. Um, it was kind of an impulsive decision to dupe it. I meant to do it in a video and it just, didn't go that way so but I will do a couple looks with it because I really I'm so into this palette and this color story but with the stone vibes palette I do intend to make a video duping that palette as well and then doing some looks with it so you know other than that like other than those two palettes I'm going strong I'm not super tempted by anything else um I just, I feel good. And then my book no buy and my TBR progress, um, the no buy is going great. Not tempted at all. Um, I've had to uh, refrain a couple times from going into thrift. I think my husband's putting away the dishes. Um, I've had to refrain a couple times from going into thrift stores because one of my favorite things to do in thrift stores is peruse the books and see what kind of hidden treasures I can find. Um, so I've had to hold myself back from going into thrift stores because that's my main motivation to go into them anyway. Um, and I've been tempted when I've gone to the mall near my parents' house, I've been tempted to go into the Barnes and Noble there, but I have held myself back. I've really been tempted until this month to buy books, but I'm really feeling I'm really beginning to feel the temptation to buy. Um, but I've only read one book so far in March off my TBR. I'm filming this a couple days before the end of March um, and I'm on track to potentially finish a second one. But point is, I'm not making much progress at all. I still have about 50 something books on my TBR shelf. But other than that, everything is going well with my no buys. I'm, I'm on track, I'm going well, I'm going strong. I feel very good about where I'm at with my no buys. Moving on though, to my low buy. So I guess we'll first talk about what I've bought since January. Um, and if you don't know, basically when I started my low buy, I gave myself an item budget rather than a monetary budget and my budget is that I am allowed to buy five new items every three months so long as I do not go over limits that I've set in each category of my makeup collection, um, which I'm also gonna talk to you about when I go over my inventory. I just feel like waving things around. I need to use my hands today. Um, so very first thing I bought in January was the e.l.f. Um, hydrating camo concealer. I needed a new concealer. I had bought a couple of these, but they were in the wrong shades. They were, um, 
I think one was too light and the other might have been too dark. I don't remember. I gave them away. Um, but I finally got my right shade. This one works pretty well for me. Um, and I like the concealer. It's a decent concealer. Maybe not my favorite. Um, I still really, really want my NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. So I'm, you know, where I'm at right now, this could change because I've got a long way to go before I finish this. But where I'm at right now is that um, when I'm done with this, I would really like to buy my NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer again and have that in my collection. We'll see, my feelings could change. But um, this is a fine concealer. It's nice and hydrating. It doesn't look too matte on the skin. The only issue I run into is that this is so pigmented that I have to be extremely careful how much I use or um, if I go even the slightest bit overboard, like I use a dot too much, it can start to look really cakey and makeup-y and I don't like that. Um, I have learned how to use it, I've learned how much to use, and I try very hard to stick to that. Um, but for me, as somebody who doesn't wear foundation, things like this, where concealers are like really, really pigmented, they can be nice, but I have to be really careful, otherwise, otherwise it can begin to look kind of weird on my skin since I'm not wearing foundation. Um, so, decent concealer, don't know if I'll repurchase it, I'd much rather have my NARS, but we'll see. We'll see how I feel as time goes on. And then I, of course, bought the Pat McGrath uh, Mothership 9, the Utopian Dreams, in January. Um, in case you don't know, my mother-in-law, very generously, so generously, bought me six of the Pat McGrath Mothership palettes. I already had the first three. I was only missing this one, and so... I decided that I would buy the nine and then I would go on a palette no buy. That's why I'm on a palette no buy um, for this year. So I still haven't used it. Um, also, in case you're not aware, I am doing a series basically where I'm doing five looks with each of the Mothership palettes. Um, I do like five looks over the course of a week. And then at the end of that week, I do a big in-depth review um, swatching, discussing video. I also build a dupe of the mothership that I used and like compare it to other things in my collection. Um, and I'm thinking at the end of it, when I finish with the mothership 10, what I'm going to do is do a huge video where I compare all the motherships to one another. I talk about similar shades, like really go in depth, um, and like rank all the motherships, give you like a good overview of each and every palette, um, but it's gonna take a while to get there. I am on, I'm gonna start number four here in the next week or so um, after this video goes up. So it's like the first or second week of April I'm planning on doing that. Um, but so all that to say, I haven't used this one yet. I don't know, I've swatched it a little bit and it feels really nice. I like how it feels, but I have no idea how it actually works on the eyes. Um, it feels very similar to like my favorite mothership, which is um, number three currently. Um, the first three are really the only ones that I know I haven't used four through 10. So I don't know, that's subject to change probably, but um, it feels like the same great quality as the three. Um, and the first one, number two, didn't impress me so much. There were a couple problems I had with it, but this feels really nice is my point. So I am looking forward to messing about with it. Um, I don't remember if I told you how much I spent on the e.l.f. concealer or anything. I'll just give you the prices at the end. Then, um, for February, I didn't buy any makeup. I went on an unofficial no buy in February and it felt very good. I was very proud of myself. I didn't even really think about buying makeup. And the only thing that I knew I was going to need was this. And I bought a replacement this month in March. This is my Tarte Timeless Smoothing Primer. It's just a really, really amazing pore filling primer. I think this is like my fifth jar of it, fourth or fifth jar. Um, since I discovered it years ago, 
I love this. This is going to last me at least six months. It's a great product. Absolutely love it. People have their feelings about Tarte as a brand. I don't know. I just know this is the best pore filling primer I've ever personally found for myself. And I like it. However, um, I made kind of a stupid purchase. So I bought the Tarte primer at a Sephora, like I was physically in a Sephora because I had a couple gift cards that I couldn't use online. Um, and I was with my sister, so I was a little distracted. I wasn't thinking really about my budget and my, um, you know, makeup limits, you know, like the limits on my products and stuff. I wasn't really thinking. And I passed the Urban Decay section and for the last month or so, I've been really missing the Urban Decay eyeliner in Empire. And so I passed by the Urban Decay section. I kind of looked at the eyeliners and I was like, you know what? I'm going to buy it. I'm going to buy it. I've been really wanting this eyeliner. I'm just going to buy it. And when I got home that night, I realized I shouldn't have bought it for two reasons. Um, so my limit on eyeliners that I've given myself is 15. And before buying this eyeliner, I had 22. So I now have 23. So I am eight eyeliners over the limit I set my, set for myself. And then recently, I don't know why I didn't do this from the beginning, but for my eyeliners, I, um, separated them out like my lipsticks where I have the overall category limit. And then for each color category, I have a, like a, another limit. Um, and like, I don't know why I didn't do this from the beginning because I like to have eyeliners of different colors. Like I like to have a, a rainbow, like a variety. Um, so again, I don't know why I didn't do this from the start, but I didn't. Um, but anyway, so I, I separated them out and I gave myself a limit of three purple eyeliners and I had three. And now I have four. So I just, I wasn't thinking. Um, and I got home and I swatched it and I was just so excited about it. And then I looked at my document, my Excel sheet that I have. And I was like, oh shit, I screwed up again. <laughs> because I also, um, the e.l.f. concealer, I bought this in December instead of January. I meant to order it in January, but I was placing an order for some makeup remover at Ulta. I looked at this and I just bought it without really thinking. Um, so I counted it towards January's budget because that's what it was intended to be from. But I accidentally bought it a little too early. And then I accidentally bought this when I just don't, like I have the physical space for it, but I have way too many eyeliners for me. Um, So it was a really stupid, stupid decision. Um, I didn't think about it. I wasn't thinking at the time. However, it is beautiful. <laughs> like I do love this eyeliner. It is, I would, I would say it's my favorite purple eyeliner of all time. I love the cool toneness of it. I love the richness, the depth. It's just so good. It's so, so good. I. I love this eyeliner, um, but it was a really bad idea to buy it and I should not have bought it, but I have it now and it is what it is. And then this last thing I'm conflicted about. Um, I was super excited when I bought it. Um, I have it on my eyes today, but I just, I don't know. Um, let me just tell you what it is. So it is the Auric Smoke Reflect in the shade Ego. Um, and it is this beautiful kind of soft, hazy, smoky, um, gunmetal cream eyeshadow. So pretty. And that's the cream. And then if you're not familiar, this is a, a duo. So in the top here, you just, you open it like a little compact, you get this topper eyeshadow. And this is a little bit lighter, a little bit more like silvery than the cream, but you can use them together. You can use them separately. Topper's like over here. I hope you can see that. 
pretty well. I don't know. Here's why I'm having conflicting feelings about this. So I recently did a declutter where I went through my singles, like my magnetic singles and then my liquid shadows and my prepackaged single eyeshadows. And of my liquid shadows and my prepackaged singles, I kept three things. I kept my Makeup Forever Starlit Powder, um, I kept my About Face Liquid Eyeshadow, and I kept my other Smoke Reflect in the shade Entice, which was a gift from my husband. He got it for me during my no buy year. I don't remember exactly when. I think it was for my birthday. Um, but he got me this, and it's a lovely product. I love this thing. I love it a lot, okay? Um, and I've used it a little bit. Um, the problem is with things like this that are separate from my magnetic singles or my palettes, I tend to forget that I have them. So no matter how much I love the product, I don't use these as much as I would like to because they're not in a palette. Um, and I can't put them in a palette. So it's just harder for me to remember I have it. So basically I did this declutter. I didn't declutter very much. I didn't have much to begin with, but I said in that video that I don't use things like this, things in these jars that are pre-packaged that have their own separate packaging that live in a separate place than my palettes. I don't think about them. I don't use them. Even if I adore the product, like I adore these, I don't reach for them because I forget about them. And so what do I do? I went out and bought a second one of these. At the time, my logic was I love Entice so much. I wonder if I had more of these to pick from if I would remember them. Like if I had more of them taking up space, if they would take, like if I had more taking up like more physical space, would they then take up more mental space and I would remember to use them more. It made sense at the time. I'm not sure it makes any sense now, but um, I'm conflicted because there is that where I tend to forget about these. So it, despite being on my wish list for so, so long, like I've wanted these, especially this shade and temper, which I took off my wish list in the video where I edited my wish list, but I put it back on. I don't know. It's one of those shades. Like I wanted this one more, but I still really would like temper eventually. Like it's still something that I want. Um, so it's back on my wish list, but um, I've wanted these since they launched, which I don't know how long ago that was. It's been years now. Um, I wanted these for so, so long. Right, so it's it's not as if it was truly an impulse buy, you know, like I've wanted them. Um, I've thought about them a lot, I've researched them. Like I've, I'm pretty, like I'm very sure that these are a product that I want to bring into my collection, right? It was like a week and a half ago, I think, when I actually purchased it. Um, but I knew the end of March was coming up. I had space in my budget for one more item. And, you know, I was like, well, is there something on my wish list that maybe like will fit in my collection? Like I have space for something. There were a couple of other things that I was considering buying, but um, when I looked at my inventory, I didn't actually have the space for them, you know, according to the limitations I've given myself. So those things were out. I don't really remember what they were at this moment, but I just remember there were a couple of other things that I was looking at and I couldn't buy them because I was at my limit or over my limit on that category. And so I saw the Auric Smoke Reflect on my wish list, and I was like, oh, I just decluttered some of my singles. This is something that I do actually want. You know, the things I decluttered were more impulse buys. Um, so like, why not, you know, bring in something that I really, really want off my wish list in this category. So that's what I did. Um, the problem is it felt uncomfortably like how my impulse buys felt before I went on my no buy. It felt 
a little bit too similar to that. You know, it was like I was just looking for something to spend my budget on, which I guess isn't necessarily a bad thing because I do have the space for it and I did have room in my budget to buy it. Um, but also the fact that I did a declutter so close to buying it makes me feel a little bit icky because that's what I used to do a lot was I would buy a lot of makeup and then I'd declutter a lot of makeup so that I would have an excuse to bring more makeup in because then, you know, like, oh, I decluttered all this stuff. I have more space for new stuff, stuff that I might like more, stuff that I might use more. And like, it's a vicious binge purge cycle, if you will. I see a lot on YouTube with people who do beauty content. And if you watch a lot of beauty content like I did, or I still do, but um, you can also fall into that kind of binge purge cycle of buying makeup and purging it so you can bring in more makeup. Um, so it felt very uncomfortably similar to that as well, the more I thought about it, where I decluttered some stuff and then I brought it in. I, and I, I don't feel like I brought it in for the wrong reasons. It is something that I've wanted for a really, really long time. And I love it. Like, I think it's a great product. I love, love these products. Um, and like, I don't know. I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm just super conflicted about it. I don't necessarily regret it. I guess it just, I wasn't expecting for it to feel so similar to how it felt buying makeup before my no buy. Like it makes me kind of emotional <laughs> because it almost feels like a failure in a way. Like I, like I unintentionally gave in to that feeling of buying something that I shouldn't have, even though that's not the case. Like I, 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 I don't really have the words for what I'm feeling, but it, it's brought up a lot of uncomfortable feelings for me that I'm having to work through. Um, but I, I do really like the product. Like I said, I'm using it today. I, I actually used um, some, a lot of the products actually that I talked about in my least used makeup video that I put up a few days ago. Um, I had a few, like I had blushes and a couple highlighters and some lipsticks and stuff in there. And I made a point to use some of those things today. Um, and I was going to use my very neglected Auric Smoke Reflect in Entice, but I haven't had a chance to play with this yet, so I used the one in Ego. And I, I don't know. I don't know how to feel. I, like, I love the thing and I don't regret buying it. I'm just working through my emotions. Who knew buying an eyeshadow duo would be so complicated? <laughs> Dear God. Okay, anyway. Um, yeah, so costs. So the e.l.f. camo concealer, I estimated it to be about $8.50 after shipping and taxes. Um, like I said, I bought a couple of other things when I bought it, um, namely makeup remover. So I don't know exactly how much this cost me, but I'm estimating about $8.50. The Pat McGrath Mothership 9 cost me $105.70. I bought it off of Poshmark. Um, the Tarte Smoothing Primer cost me $42.51. Again, I'm kind of estimating here because I bought this and um, I got a lip balm and the eyeliner. And then, uh, oh, my sister and I split a perfume, like mini perfume duo. Um, she's apparently really into perfumes and we saw this little um, duo at the checkout line and we were like, hey, maybe we could like split it. You know, you pick a scent, I pick a scent and we both get a fun, fancy perfume out of it. It was just really fun. Um, so did that. So I just kind of estimated with like the tax and everything on that. So I came up to $42.51. Um, the Urban Decay Liner, I estimated at about $27.25. And then the Auric Smoke Reflect 
was $48.24, bringing my total for this quarter to $232.20. And um, it feels like a lot more. Um, it's almost $100 more, actually, than I spent in November and December last year. Um, so November is when my low buy started. And um, November and December last year, I spent a total of $145.67, and I did buy five items then. Um, however, I bought the majority of that stuff during Black Friday, so I got good discounts on a lot of it. The only thing I bought full price was a mascara, but everything else I got on discount. So yeah, so it feels like a lot more, but I feel like the totals would have been more similar had I been buying the things from especially November at full price. Um, but also I bought the Pat McGrath palette, which while I got it discounted was still expensive. Um, so that didn't help. Um, but I, I have to say, I think that will be my most expensive makeup item this coming year. So I think going forward, my totals should definitely be a little bit lower. But still, $230 in three months on makeup is unheard of for me. Like I said, with, you know, the amount that I spent in November and December, I think I talked about it in my, either my November update or December update. I don't remember, but I know I talked about this. I would spend probably around a thousand dollars a month on makeup. I, I don't know. I'm too scared to really go back and look at the numbers and figure it out. But I spent, I've spent a good chunk of money through the years on makeup. Okay, I'm um, sorry, my phone is complaining about being too full. So I had to delete some stuff. Some like old footage that I hadn't gotten around to deleting yet. But anyway, I wanted to circle back around to something I talked about. I think it was my last update. I'm terrible at timelines, but I think it was my last update where I spoke about something that I was considering doing. When I started my low buy, um, I made a rule for myself that like makeup sets, like um, specifically something on my wish list that's a set is the Kaleidos Lip Clays. You can like build your own bundle of four lipsticks. At the beginning of my low buy, I basically like, you know, if I bought a set like that, I was gonna treat it as like four individual items rather than one item off of my budget. So if I bought a set of four lipsticks, that was four items used from my budget. Okay. And then last month, I was playing around with the idea of instead of doing that, if I bought a set, treating it as spending one item from my budget rather than the four. And I have come to the conclusion that I'm not going to do that. I'm going back to my original rule. Um, first of all, it feels like I'm overcomplicating it a little bit. Um, but more than that, um, I know myself. And I know that while I may be in control of myself now, if I break down and if I give myself this loophole, I will use it and abuse it and I will fuck up everything I've worked so hard to do, to, to achieve with my spending habits and with this no buy and the low buy, like I will fuck it all up, okay? So I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna give myself the opportunity to screw up. I'm not gonna give myself this very dangerous pass to treat four pieces of makeup like one piece of makeup if I buy a set of makeup, it's going to be counted as the, you know, the amount of items that are in the set. So I think that's just the way to go. I think that will be better for me in the long run. Um, I, I was just looking for an excuse to buy makeup because my lipstick collection is not small. Okay. I have 30 something lipsticks. I think like 36, 38 lipsticks. That is not a small collection. Okay, I'm aware of this, but it is small for me. It is the smallest my lip collection has been in years. Okay, I don't think I've had 
this number of lipsticks since I first started buying makeup. I very quickly went from zero to 100 when I started buying makeup. So this is the smallest my lip collection has been in years. And that's hard for me. I have always struggled with feeling like I need an overabundance in order to have enough. That goes, you know, that, that's how it's been in a lot of categories in my life. Um, and so I'm trying to be aware of that. And I'm very aware that I don't have a small lip collection. 30 something lipsticks for one person is still a lot. And I really don't need more. Um, but there are certain colors of lipstick that I miss having. And so what I think I'm going to do for, um, well, I think for the next couple weeks, I'm going to refrain from buying anything because I want to make sure that I have enough of my like necessary products. Like I'm not going to run out of anything or um, need to replace anything in the next couple months. I want to make sure I'm comfortable with everything. But if I am, what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on buying lipsticks and the colors that I want. Um, and I'll talk about that in a little bit when I talk about my inventory, but um, there's just a few lipstick colors that I miss having and I would like them back in my life. So I think the next couple months are going to be all about the lipstick and getting those colors back into my collection because I miss them. I really, really want these colors and I... Other than lipsticks, there's not really any other category that I can really be buying in. Like, I'm pretty much capped out on blushes. I really don't want any more highlighters or anything right now. I'm good on eyeshadows, single eyeshadows. I can't buy palettes. I have way too many eyeliners. Like, lipsticks is basically the only category in my collection that I feel comfortable bringing new stuff into. Other than, like, single shadows. But... As we discussed, I'm conflicted about that apparently. So I think that's what I want to do. After I'm sure that I'm okay for the next couple months, um, basically until July on my more necessary products, um, or you know, if I have to buy one or two, then I will use the rest of my budget to bring in the lipsticks that I'm missing the most. Or if I can, I'm going to use my entire budget to buy five lipstick colors that I really, really want. So I think that is the plan. We'll see. Um, but I just wanted to update you on that because I, I basically introduced the idea of me changing up that rule for my budget and didn't have a definitive answer if I was going to do it or not, but I really feel much better and you know, more at peace with the idea of not changing it. So I'm not going to. Oh, um, I also forgot. So I did add up the total um, of how much money I've spent altogether since November on makeup. And it's, let's see, yeah, $377.87, which is wild. Oh my God, that's so wild. That's five months of makeup buying. That's so little. <laughs> Like that, it's such a large number altogether. Like that's almost $400. That's not a small amount of money, but it's a small amount of money to have spent on makeup for me, if that makes sense. It's just unbelievable to me that I've managed to spend so little on makeup compared to what I have spent in the past. Mind boggling. I'm so proud of myself for that like I'm I'm just really really happy with that <sighs> but anyway okay so moving on um I'm gonna quickly talk about my inventory and um some of the things that I'm thinking about with my inventory and like the limits I've given myself so base products for face primers my limit is two and I have two Eye primers, my limit is one, I have one. Concealer is the same, limit is one, I have one. For brows, I have a limit of two products and I'm down to one. I actually used up the last of my clear brow gel today, or at least, you know, I'm considering it done. I can barely get anything off either side of the, the thing. So 
I'm just calling it good. Um, for powder, my limit is one, but I still have two. I really need to start working through my powders. It just needs to happen. Um, for bronzer, my limit is one, and I only have one. And then contour, I don't want any, and I don't have any. And then for blush. So my limit that I set for myself at the beginning was 30. Um, 30 blushes overall. Um, 25 for powder, 2 for cream, 2 for liquid. And at the end of December, I had 29. I now have 20. And I think 20 is still a lot. And so I feel like having a limit of 30 blushes overall is too many. Um, I'm thinking about bringing this down to 20 for the time being. Like having no more than 20 blushes for the time being. And then maybe as time goes on, as like they start to kind of dwindle down, whether they go bad or I declutter some more, um, I'm going to lower that limit even more. But I think for now I'm going to keep the limit at 20 rather than 30. Um, and then cream and liquid, I think I'm going to bring these down to a limit of one as well. Um, so I had one cream blush at the end of December and I still have one. And then liquid blushes, my limit um, has been two. Um, I had four at the end of December and I now have two. So I, I don't know. I'm working on trying to use up my Rare Beauty liquid blush. Um, and then I think when that one's gone, I'm just going to focus or not focus, I think I'm just going to give myself a limit of one for cream and liquid blushes because they go bad much faster than powder and I don't really want to have a bunch of them laying around. Or you know, maybe if I decide to own way less powder blushes, like no more than five, but I'm really into cream blushes, then maybe I can, you know, work on expanding my limit in that category. At, you know, this. The limits are fluid, they're going to change as my tastes change and as my collection changes. So right now I just feel like I need to lower the overall limit for highlighters. Um, so my limit has been 20 with 15 powder highlighters, one cream, one liquid. At the end of December I had 19 powder, uh, sorry, at the end of December I had 19 highlighters. 18 of those were powder, I didn't have any creams. And I had one liquid. So here at the end of March, I have 16 highlighters, 15 being powders, zero creams, and one liquid. And 12 of those powder highlighters are actually from palettes. I have two six pan highlighter palettes. Um, and I love them both. I don't want to I don't want to declutter either of them. Um, so I don't know. I don't really know what to do here. Um, it kind of is what it is. But I also, I'm happy with having one liquid blush, or not liquid blush, but also I'm happy with having one liquid highlighter. I do miss having a cream highlighter, but I, I don't know, I don't feel like I need to have both. I feel like I could have either a liquid highlighter or a cream highlighter. I don't need to have one of each on hand. So maybe once my liquid highlighter either goes bad or I use it up, which is probably not going to happen, um, then I'll buy a cream highlighter and maybe I can alternate between the two. But I am thinking about bringing my highlighter uh, limit down as well. Um, but specifically, I think in the future, um, I'm going to change my powder highlighter limit specifically down to 10 rather than 15. 15 is just, it's just still too many. So, and then lipsticks. Um, I won't go into every single color category limit that I have, but my overall limit for lipsticks is 50. At the end of December, I had 41, and now I have 36. Um, so the categories that I want to change, so for reds, I gave myself a limit of 10, and I still have 8, which is what I had at the end of December, but I don't wear reds that often. Um, I used to wear them a lot more but I'm just not wearing them as often anymore. Um, so I feel like eight is too many. I think I would be very happy with five. I think five is a good number, especially because it is a color category that I love in lipstick. And I do want to have a couple options, but eight just feels like a lot. And especially because I'm not wearing them super often. 
Um, then for browns, I gave myself a limit of five and I have two and I would really like to have a really deep, rich brown, like almost a blackened brown, like a really, really rich brown. And then a kind of mid-tone cool brown. So those are two of the lipstick shades that I'm really missing and I would like to bring back into my collection. Um, and then yellows, I have a limit of three. Um, and I had two, but I had to declutter them because they both went off around the same time. Um, so I would really like to have at least one yellow back in my collection. Um, I'm good on oranges, greens, teals. For blues, I have a limit of five. Um, might lower that actually, because I don't feel like I need five blue lipsticks, but we'll see. Um, and I have two, I've had two since December, but I would really, really love a deep navy blue, like the one that I had from Fenty. Maybe even like a bit more blue than that. I'm good on, uh, I'm mostly good on purples. So my limit for purples is 10. I had six and now I have four and I feel really good about that. I like where I'm at with purples. Um, and I think I'm actually gonna lower my limit down to five with these um, because I feel really good with four and purple is a color that I used to wear a lot more, like reds. Reds and purples were my lipsticks of choice. Way back when, before I met my husband, before I had a baby, like, that was what I was wearing a lot. Um, but now it's just another color that I don't wear that often. And I don't know. I, I feel good about having four and, you know, maybe bringing in another one, but... I think 10 is just too much. Same with pinks. Um, my limit is 10 and I still have eight. I had eight at the end of December. And even though I'm wearing this category more often and pinks and nudes are um, one in the same category for me. Um, even though I'm wearing this category more often than I used to, I feel like eight's too many. I tend to just wear either Pink Moon from Kaleidos or Devoted to Chili from MAC which are very wearable, my lips but better kind of shades. So I feel like I don't need eight pink nude options. Um, and then I added in a gray category because I realized how much I would like a gray lipstick. Um, I've given myself a limit of three grays. I don't have any, but I would like to have one. So I think I'm going to... Uh, definitely look for a gray lipstick in the coming months. And then eyeliner we already talked about. My limit is 15. I had 22, but I now have 23. Um, and yeah, I just, I think the only ones, the only subcategories that I really want to work on, um, my oranges. I don't own any orange eyeliners. Um, once I have the space for it, once I'm not over my limit, I would like to buy a burnt orange eyeliner. Really, really want a burnt orange eyeliner. I've had one before. I've had several before, and I love them. So definitely want to look into getting one of those when I have space. Um, purples, my limit is three, and I have four. You know, so... I either need to declutter one of these or I need to focus on using one or two up, basically. Um, and then black eyeliners, I've given myself a limit of two. I think I'm gonna lower this to one, but um, I have three. So, I need, and I think I'm pretty, I'm very close to using one up and then I'm not far from using another one up, maybe a few more months, another one should be used up and then Hopefully the third one won't take that long and then I can buy my holy grail, which is perversion from Urban Decay. Fingers crossed. Um, and then for mascara, my limit is one and I still have two, but one is a backup that I haven't opened yet. Um, but I should be getting to that one pretty soon. Um, liquid eyeshadows, my limit is five. I had three, but I now have one and I'm very okay with that. Cream shadows, um, my limit is also five. Um, I had one and now I have two since buying the um, second Arc Smoke Reflect. 
And then my pre-packaged powder eyeshadows, um, I also have a limit of five. I had four and now I have three. And then for singles in my magnetic palettes, my adept palettes, my, my limit is 250. I had 249, I, but I counted them for this and I have 248. I don't know where the other one went. I don't remember decluttering any. I remember having to throw any away or anything. I, I don't know. Um, but I'm also, I'm still counting the singles that I pulled out and put in that declutter bin. Um, because again, I haven't decided if I am for sure decluttering them. I'll decide that um, April 15th. Um, Cause I gave myself a month to decide if I was gonna actually declutter all those shadows. Um, but, if I do declutter those, um, I put 37 in the bin, so my potential total is 211. Um, and then, palettes. So at the beginning of my low buy, I gave myself a limit of 50 palettes, but I had some ColourPop palettes that I had yet to use and wanted to try them before I like made any decisions about whether I was keeping or decluttering them. I went through and made decisions about those palettes um, pretty recently and so I upped my palette limit to 60 um, and before I did that I had 53 palettes in my permanent collection permanent collection and after decluttering those ColourPop palettes I kept seven and so now I am at 60 palettes um, although I feel like I am coming to a point where I might be ready to declutter or um, break up my ColourPop palettes, like keep some of the shades from them as singles, but not keep the whole palette. Um, I just feel like the ColourPop palettes that I have, the ones that I've loved, they don't hold a candle to specifically like my Blend Bunny shadows. Blend Bunny has the best matte shadows I've ever used in my life. I love their matte shadows. Um, and I feel like ColourPop just doesn't compare to them. But it's been so long since I've used some of those palettes, especially my monochromatic palettes, that I can't really say for sure. So um, coming up here in the next month, I'm going to start revisiting those palettes. Um, some of them I haven't used since 2020, which is ridiculous. So eventually I would like to bring this limit down to 50, perhaps even lower in the future. I don't know, but I just know that 60 is too many for me. I am not happy with where my palette collection is at. I feel in my heart and soul that I really need to be realistic with myself with my ColourPop palettes. I know I'm keeping a lot of them just because I'm still wanting to collect them. Like I feel like it's the collection I've had. This is my ColourPop collection and I don't want to break up my ColourPop collection. But the fact is I'm just not using them like I was before I found Blend Bunny and before I found Pat McGrath and all these things. I'm just not using them. My collection has changed, it has evolved, and I need to accept that and I need to make some changes. But anyway, that is that. That is this update. I am done. I am tired of trying to film this video. I feel like I got it this time though, so it's all good. But yeah, that's where I'm at with my low buy, with my inventory, with everything. And I, overall, I feel pretty good. Um, I feel like I'm on track with a lot of stuff, um, but I am just working through those emotions that, um, I guess I came up when I bought the Auric uh, Smoke Reflect. And hopefully I can figure it out soon and move on and use it as something to learn from. So... Anyway, thank you very, very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you had fun with this video. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like it's boring as hell, but some people are invested in my low buy journey. So here you go. All right. I'm going to go. Thank you.
thank you so so much for watching really i do genuinely very very much appreciate it and i will see you when i see you bye <laughs>